We got seven NFC home games to cover today. Tampa Bay and Green Bay. Really looking forward to breaking that one down. You know, even like Washington and the Giants has some interesting starter sit discussions. And Minnesota Atlanta could be a high scoring game. Well, we'll save that one till the end in case that game is not played, but we're optimistic about that. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's fantasy football today. And this episode is sponsored by Express. Express is all new and all about you with a fresh assortment of casual, versatile, and super comfortable styles. Find out more about Express and their exclusive offer later in the show. Happy Friday, Dave and Jamie. What's up, guys? Hey. What's going on? (sighs) Not much. I got stumbled upon a good Netflix show. What was it? It's called Friends from College. You guys seen it? So it's the first time you've had friends from college. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I guess that's why why I liked it so much. I was like, oh, (laughs) this is what everybody's been talking about. Uh, actually, my wife has been watching it, and I started like kind of tuning in while she was. It's like laugh out loud, funny, and very good. So, yeah, highly recommend. Who's awesome. in it? Keegan Michael Key, but Michael Key, yeah, that guy, and uh, Fred Savage, I think. Wow, and those guys went to college together. Huh? Really on the streets in it. Um, like it's a bunch of people that you've seen before, but may not know their names. Okay, it's good. It's very funny, and uh, yeah. All right, well, there you go. Show recommendation for everybody. Uh, Fantasy football recommendation, be very afraid. It's Halloween month. Be very afraid of the Chiefs' backfield. This beginning potentially next week. Kansas City signed Le'Veon Bell. Dave and I broke it down on a bonus pod and on Fantasy Football Today in 5, which you all should be listening to, by the way. So, Jamie, give me your thoughts. Le'Veon Bell to the Chiefs, what do you think? I mean, obviously it sucks for Clyde Edwards-Alaire, but, you know, we'll see how this all shakes out. The thing that I go back to is uh, think about when we were July, June, July, and we were drafting Edwards Alaire with Damian Williams on the roster and where we were taking him. End of round two, beginning of round three, right? Yep. If that's the type of player you're getting, which is basically the way he's been performing, then you'll be okay. Now, will he continue to, will he play like that? Who knows? You know, hopefully this is a little bit of a motivating factor for him. We'll find out against the Bills. But uh, this is going to be a, a split backfield. You know, you go back to how it was last year for the Chiefs where Damian Williams was basically about 13 carries and, and three to five catches. And I think that's what Edward Solaire is going to be. So Le'Veon's probably going to take a few weeks to work his way up to speed. Um, and we'll, we'll find out, you know, how the, how the Chiefs actually view him. But this is, this is obviously a, a, a significant downgrade for Edward Solaire. Dave, would you like to follow up, sir? Well, I, I haven't really changed my opinion much on Edward Zulaire after what I said on, on the emergency pod yesterday. But I, I've kind of changed my tune on Le'Veon because I keep going back to what you've said, Adam, which is basically what the hell has Le'Veon Bell done in the last two and a half years anyway? And so we just think that this is like a, a magical car wash that he's going to get all the grime and rust and gunk off of him that comes with playing for Adam Gates and just come out shining. And it's happened to a lot of players before that have happened that have uh, played with Adam Gase. I'm I'm not certain that he's going to be the old Le'Veon like we saw in Pittsburgh. This right. isn't a dominant offensive line in Kansas City. They've got very good tackles, but they just lost their starting guard for the year. Right. I'm not I'm I'm not certain that this is going to turn out to be. Ooh, Le'Veon's back. He's going to be amazing. And Clyde edwards alaire go hit the bench. I think they're going to split. I, I, th- I honestly believe what I said yesterday, which is that Edwards Alaire could still be in line for around 15 touches per game. And Jamie just talked, uh, really, he summed it up nicely about what were the expectations before the year. That's what it should be now. And I think I was probably a little too, bit too bullish on Le'Veon saying that he's even a low end number two running back. He's probably not even going to be that. I, here, here are the steps I would take. One, if I've got Le'Veon Bell on my team, I'm trying to sell high right now. Let's see what I can get for Le'Veon Bell. And if I don't have Clyde Edwards Alaire on my team, I'm going to take the temperature of the guy in my league who does, guy or girl in my league who does. And if they are like, oh, this sucks, Edwards Alaire is not going to be any good, buy low. Get him on the cheap. Do yourself a favor because he still has plenty of upside. Okay. Well, I'm looking at your trade chart now, which is not updated, right? Uh, it is. Oh, it is. Okay. So you have him in between David Montgomery and Raheem Mostert. Who's that? that? Edward Zilaire? Yeah, Edward Zilaire. Yeah, right. So that's how you feel about it. You'd rather you, – you basically have him even with Montgomery and Mostert. Mm-hmm. Ahead of Gurley, ahead of Eckler, ahead of Devin Singletary, 
ahead of Melvin Gordon. He Can- should be way ahead of Singletary. Okay. Singletary's value dropped. It, add, it should read like 10 and 12. I had a few people tweet me yesterday that he, he seems like he's going to be Devin Singletary. He might Edward be. Because, because, I mean, that's, that's a fair comp. Right. <laughs> you know, because he doesn't score touchdowns, right. which, you know, has been a problem for him. He obviously has the ability to play in the passing game. The difference would be is that Zach Moss is obviously a different type of player than Le'Veon Bell if you're comparing the, the complementary options. So, you know, Bell can do a lot of the same things that Edward Solaire can do. The th- I just want to go back to something Dave said, and, and it's interesting because, you know, it's the how bad were the Jets and how good are the Chiefs, you know? And so, yes, the offensive line is not great in Kansas City by comparison to what it was a year ago. But, you know, Le'Veon, if you're getting 2019 Le'Veon for the way that he played and putting that in the Chiefs offense, if he gets that type of work, he's going to be a monster. Now, that's 300 touches. That's not realistic. But that's Clyde edwards Lair getting hurt. Right. If he gets that type of work. But I think if you're just talking about his performance, uh, so what was he, 3.9 yards per carry? 3.2, 3.2 yards per carry, I think it was. Last um, year, 3.2. This year, right. 3.9. Two, right. Three years ago, 2017, 4.0, which was right. very low for him. With but just go back to last year. So 3.2. Let's say that's 3.6 in, in Kansas City. But it's the receiving numbers that you're looking at that you're hoping he can still produce. So, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's going to be a mess. It's, it's really going to be frustrating. You know, the hope would be is that Clyde edwards helaire goes out Monday night against Buffalo and just smashes that game and just absolutely has a big, dominant, amazing performance. And Andy Reid and, Ed, and Eric Bieniemy and the coaching staff there just says, okay, we'll work Le'Veon in slow. It's kind of like Leonard Fournette. Work him in slowly. You heard Bruce Arians say time and time again, emergency uh, situation. You know, that would be the ideal scenario is that Le'Veon Bell is, is used like the Bucks are using Leonard Fournette. Okay. And Dave pointed out on the bonus podcast last night that Clyde Edwards either has been terrible in pass protection. So it makes- he really hasn't even been given a chance to pass protect. Oh, okay. Well, but it makes sense for Le'Veon yeah. Bell to assume that role, which of course does not mean that Clyde Edwards either won't catch passes. It just means, you know, third and long two minute drill, that kind of thing. He might come off the field. Right. It's hard to catch pointing- passes when you're on the sideline. And right. Dar- Darrell but Williams in their first- last game against the Raiders ran the most routes he's had all season. So right. Chasing points, first time we've seen him in that scenario, they were using a second guy. Yeah, so, this was an upgrade on Daryl Williams. Oh, for sure. Darwin Thompson, the whole group. This, that yeah. was the reason they did this. Okay. But what I'm saying, you know, you can still catch passes on first and second down, and Clyde Edwards either will still have a role in the passing game. And then in terms of just you want to look at just yards per carry, like look at what it did for LaShawn McCoy last year. It went way up after a really horrible year in 2018. It was much better. It was much more efficient in 2019. But then again, he, he really didn't play that well, and they basically benched him and got away from him and made him inactive, uh, even though the numbers on the surface didn't look that bad. So, I, look, I, th- I don't think – I'm not sure if Le'Veon Bell is good anymore. I think it's an easier case to make when he's on the Jets behind a horrible offensive line and a terrible offense with a bad coach with no weapons around him. The Chiefs' offense can be a tonic. Like, you can just look at Daryl Williams. I don't think any of us think Daryl Williams is that good. But last year, when he got the opportunities, he had, like, three games where he actually got some work, and he was pretty much good for fantasy in all three. So, you know. Look at Damian Williams. He was nothing in the NFL. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, you know what's interesting? Damian Williams told us that the Chiefs had him lose weight. You know, he, he was too big with the Dolphins. Uh, so he told us that. Well, he was a special teams guy in Miami. I mean, you know, he was essentially their third string running back with Way the Dolphins. Way too big, too. So, yeah. so, you know, the Chiefs know what they're doing. They can get something out of Le'Veon Bell. But you can get something out of Le'Veon Bell. So if you had Le'Veon Bell right now, let's just finish with this. Give me, like, two names you'd be looking for, be it a wide receiver, running back, or whatever. Um, and then I'll, would you trade him to take a gamble on Zach Ertz if you needed a tight end? Absolutely. 100%. Because if, if Ertz turns things around, he's still got top five potential at the position. I'd I would, be trying, I'd be trying to get Juju before this week. I'd be trying to get, uh, you know, you want to package him with something, maybe try to get Julio, uh, you know, somebody that's a frustrated Julio Jones owner. You know, so those are the type of moves I think you try to make. Like one for one, I, I don't think you're going to get anything that you're going to love because if I'm, you know, like I'm not trading Wolf Fuller for Le'Veon Bell at this point. I'm not trading A.J. Brown for Le'Veon Bell. You know, guys that have had some inconsistent performances or concerns about injury. You know, so I'm going to try and put Levy on and maybe a receiver to get a receiver or Levy on another running back to get another running back. That's the type of move I'd be looking to make. Okay. All right, cool. Let's move on here. Um, so some teams dealing with COVID. Atlanta shut down their facility yesterday. We know that. They're still on to play Minnesota, and that game is on Sunday. So that's as of now. The Colts, this morning we saw they're shutting their facility down. They had some positive tests. 
And we know the drill. I mean, we just have to wait and see. There's not much we can tell you at this point. Odell Beckham was sent home with an illness that, as of now, it hasn't been reported as COVID. We're waiting for test results there, I guess. Um, and Jarvis Landry also missed practice. So they're banged know, up. Sit Baker Mayfield. Kareem Hunt is banged up, but Baker he's been Mayfield. dealing with this injury for a while. And Mayfield's banged up. I think the Steelers are going to win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, Browns are good. I mean, it's disappointing. I'd like to see them get healthy for this game. Uh, and then, so, so those are the COVID situations. We'll just we'll have to be fluid there. And if you're a commissioner, you got to be super flexible. It's going to be tough. Um, I, according to Zach Kiefer of The Athletic, he just tweeted this 12 minutes ago. He covers Colts. Mm-hmm. Uh, the team is working to confirm the cases, so there's a chance they could be false positives. They are working virtually Friday as if Sunday's game is still on. And the Colts so far have had no positive cases since training camp started. So this is the first time that they're dealing with this. Yeah. And you should also, as fantasy managers, be prepared for a week 18, uh, which could bump your playoffs back a week. You know, just, just be prepared. It, the possibility has been brought up uh, by Goodell. So, you know, uh, Melvin Gordon practiced. He returned to practice. Do we know if he's going to play or is just a wait and see approach with Gordon? I would imagine if he practiced, they're going to play him and let the uh, NFL determine the disciplinary action but still something you got to keep an eye on. Here's a way you can stay up to date. You can sign up for our newsletter. Go to cbssports.com slash newsletter. We have have several different ones, but you can select fantasy football today and get the content sent to you during, you know, every day, basically. You get some great content. You get some kind of buy low, sell high trade talk, some waiver wire talk, the news that you need to know starts and sits, uh, links to all of our content. So cbssports.com slash newsletter. And big weekend, as always, you can tweet us with the hashtag AskFFT, and you can watch Fantasy Football today on HQ, uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. We'll have an episode of Fantasy Football Today in 5 that drops on this feed and in the FFT in 5 feed uh, at 8.30 a.m. on Sunday. And we're on Twitch, noon Eastern on Sunday, to answer your starter sit questions. News and notes. All right, as if we weren't already doing news and notes, here's some more news. Adrian Peterson missed practice with an illness, non-COVID illness. So, you know, most guys miss a practice on Thursday with an illness they typically play, but we already previewed that game. Just in case he doesn't play, where would you put DeAndre Swift and or carry on Johnson in your rankings at Jacksonville? Swift would be a borderline number two, number three running back in PPR, more of a number three running back in non-PPR, and carry on would be behind him in both. I would be more excited about DeAndre Swift if – Adrian Peterson's out. He'd be close to 20 for me. Okay. A.J. Green expects to play this week, and he wants to stay with Cincinnati. They're at Indianapolis. Uh, They also lost their starting defensive end. I mentioned this yesterday, but Sam Hubbard is on IR with an elbow injury. Yeah. Uh, If if this game goes down, Jonathan Taylor should roll because not only is is Hubbard out, but D.J. Reader is also on IR. And I don't know if Mike Daniels is going to play for Cincinnati, so that D-line is in rough shape. Although they are getting Geno Atkins back. They've had him back, haven't they? He if, if played, he played last, last week. Was his first week? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Julio Jones miss, would have missed practice if the Falcons had actually practiced. So you should plan on having a backup plan for Julio Jones. That's a good use of the word "plan" twice. Cam Newton and Stephon Gilmore look like they are on track to play against Denver, and Drew Locke as well. And hopefully Noah Fant. He was limited in practice. Guys, what's going on with the Bucks wide receivers? Do you think Godwin and Evans play this week against Green Bay? They've been practicing, so it looks like they've got a great shot to play. And they're going to yeah, need them against the Packers. Yeah, Evans' mispractice on Wednesday, I think, was more of a rest situation. He was in a limited situation on Thursday, but my guess is until he's 100%, you're probably not going to get very many Wednesday practices for Evans. Godwin and Miller being limited. I mean, obviously, if Godwin plays, you don't have to worry about Scotty Miller. So, you know, hopefully Godwin's out there. That's the one you got to keep an eye on right now. All right, uh, DJ Chark missed practice. LaVisca Chenault returned to practice. So it looks like Chark right now, probably not. LaVisca Chenault, hopefully, yes. Deontay Johnson and Eric Ebron returned to practice. So not good news probably for Chase Claypool, but we shall see. Uh, do you guys differ on Chase Claypool, by the way? Dave, are you more of an optimist this week? I think he's a number three receiver. I think he's got a chance to, to be okay. I don't think he's going to go away. I, I, I think he's going to take playing time away from Ebron, not Deontay Johnson. I would imagine if Deontay Johnson plays, Claypool goes, I think Dave said it earlier this week, and I agree, he goes from 11 targets to probably five or six. Yep. You know, so that's, uh, that, but I still think Ebron's going to get five or six, and you know, then it comes down to where's Deontay and where's Juju. 
So, yeah. you know, if Ben's throwing 30 times, there's five or your, six. There's your, there's your options, <laughs> options for those guys. Okay. Uh, Deshaun Jackson was limited. Alshon, what's up with Jackson and Jeffrey? Do we think they're going to play? Against Baltimore. They're obviously trending in the right direction, but they've been practicing a lot over the last two weeks and then not playing. So Friday will be a big day. It'd be nice to see them out there just to get their rust knocked off against Baltimore because you're not going to play them. So just, you know, get them out there, get, the, get this game under their belt, and then you see what yep. the Eagles have moving forward. Yeah, they've got the Giants next week, so that could be a nice game for them to come back to. Yeah, if you, without, have, an open without roster rust. Spot, if you have an open roster spot and Alshon's still sitting out there, please go pick him up. Who would be, mm. your, who would be your favorite Eagles wide receiver this week? It, let's assume everyone plays, and who would be your favorite Eagles wide receiver rest of the season? Because apparently Fulgham is just going to be a starter. I have like two favorite Eagles receivers for this week. One is Marcus Peters, and the other is uh, Marlon Humphrey. You know, those are my two favorite Eagles receivers <laughs> for this week. Yeah, those would be the cornerback cornerbacks they are facing. What about rest of season? To <laughs> uh, Alshon. I mean, you know what he's been for for Wentz, and if he's healthy, he could end up being a number three fantasy receiver. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a I don't have a real answer. All right. Rager when he comes back, maybe. I don't know I, I can express how much I'm looking forward to the Tampa Bay-Green Bay game, by the way. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. It's absolutely going to be a blast. Uh, well, Carlton Davis has returned to practice. That's good news for Tampa Bay. But Kevin King, Green Bay starting cornerback, he's nursing an injury. Uh, and then one last injury note, John Brown and Zach Moss both practiced in full. They will play. That's Monday. another game I can't wait to watch. Yeah, me too. Uh, I, think, I think Buffalo comes back on fire. I think they absolutely bounce back. You know, if Josh Allen has another bad game where he's inaccurate, he threw two interceptions. One was not his fault. One was really bad. Yep. If he has another bad game, it's going to be like, oh, he's bad again. You know, the Josh Allen haters are going to come out from that nation. It is something that I noted when I did their schedule analysis before the season that they got off to a really good start. And if he – if, if he could, the, the test was going to be later in the year, and we're starting to get to that part of the season where he's going to get tested. And if he can pass now, then he'll be good forever. But if he can't pass now, then uh, I don't know how that's going to look and feel for fantasy purposes, but you're sticking with him for now. You're absolutely starting Josh Allen. There's no two ways about it. And I don't even think you have to even entertain the thought of having a second quarterback in case he stinks, but you should have a second quarterback just in general because it's 2020 and yeah. pandemic and blah 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 dave uh jamie and heath were on the show yesterday gave some some guys they like some guys they don't how about you you got a couple of players that you're that you're feeling this week i'm feeling andy dalton i think against arizona i think he's just starting at the right time and it's the right matchup for him cardinals haven't been great against the pass in general this year and now no chandler jones so I think he could be good. I think Brady could be good. I don't even have Brady in my top 12. I might have to rectify that once Chris Godwin is good to go. Uh, I think Brady could have a good game. For now, I like Dalton better than Brady, but I might switch that. I might go in a different direction. I, uh, I kind of like Devontae Freeman, believe it or not. We, we talked about this uh, yesterday, Adam. I believe on the Twitch stream that yeah, so. there were some plays where he looked good both in week five and week four. So I could see Devontae Freeman being a pretty good replacement at running back. Maybe you're in a pinch and you picked up Freeman. Maybe you trade for him on the super cheap. Uh, I, I think he could do well. And I'm always looking for, like, tight ends who are, have a chance to be good off the waiver wire, someone who could stand out and be okay. Th there's really – there really isn't any, you know. I mean, it's, it's just – it's such a dry position once you even get past, like, Robert Tanyan, who I think people are going to start with a smile. But I, I think Jimmy Graham could score this week. You got to love the red zone targets he's been getting. He's basically an option inside the 10-yard line for Chicago, and there should be a bunch of points in the game against Carolina. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what I like this week. I like Express, man. I told you I went on that shopping spree the other night, and it's just begun. I ordered three things. I'm going to order a lot more. As soon as I get these, see what fits me right, see what I like. Um, but I couldn't believe how many things on Express I, I – Loved and, and you know, just so many options on the website. So, first of all, let me give you the offer if you want $25 off your $50 purchase, by the way, that's a tremendous offer $25 off your $50 purchase, just text football to 397 737. 
397-737. It's pretty easy. I did it the other night on my phone. It goes to your Apple wallet if you have an iPhone. 397-737. You're going to get 25. It text football. You're going to get 25 bucks off your $50 purchase. And looking good is really important. I have learned this throughout the years. When you walk out the door, if you're going to work, if you're going out to dinner with friends or wherever the heck you're going, look good. It's not hard. Express makes it really easy. They've got such versatile selections. So if you're someone, you're, you're, you know, you're like taller or bigger and you don't think uh, you're athletic, you don't think Express is going to fit you, they've changed. They've got styles for everyone. I'm looking at their website right now. They've got women's clothing. They've got men's clothing, jeans, shirts, button-down shirts, T-shirts, polos, sweatshirts and hoodies, sweaters and fleece. They've got so many things. The jeans are terrific. Skinny jeans, not so much for me. The slim jeans, those are the ones I like. Boot cut jeans, I'm talking so much variety and you're just not going to believe the prices. I got those three things the other day for like 100 bucks. It's absolutely tremendous price on Express. So you need to be shopping on Express. Go to express.com. If you want that offer, uh, text football to 397-737. 397-737, text football. Get 25 bucks off your $50 purchase. We want to thank Express. They're sponsoring a lot of our stuff across, you know, the platforms and um, great to be partnering with them. So uh, take advantage of it, people. And take advantage of this next segment, Beat the Waiver Wire. You're looking ahead to week seven. Better options this week, I'd say. Uh, well, first of all, you can look at the Eagles DST against the Giants. That's a Thursday game. Oh, sorry, everybody. You have to watch that game on Thursday. Uh, Dallas. It'll be DST. fun. It'll be a little sloppy, but it'll be it will fun. It will not be fun. <laughs> <laughs> it will not be fun. Um, I just want to look who's on. We five. said that about the Broncos and Jets game, and that turned out to be a fun game. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Baltimore, Indianapolis, Miami, and Minnesota are on by. So if you need some replacements, here you go. Philadelphia at the Giants, Dallas DSD at Washington. Not sure how confident you are that. Um, I can look at the tight ends maybe in the Cincinnati-Cleveland game, Austin Hooper and Drew Sample. Sample had that big game against Cleveland earlier, right? Week three, I think. Sample had the week two. Week two? Yeah. It was when uh, Uzama went, went down. Yeah. Right. They both um, had a good game. Baker Mayfield at Cincinnati, potentially. It could be, could be all right if you need a quarterback. Detroit points. That's what he gets you. Yeah. Detroit's <laughs> playing Atlanta. Marvin Jones. I don't know. It's a long shot. Uh, TJ Hawkinson. Not sure how rostered he is. Forgot to check that. He might be available. He's right around 80% league. going into the week. Okay. So right, maybe 10 team leagues. Uh, Green Bay is at Houston. Marquez Valdez Scantling is still available and was a lot better when Devontae Adams played. So uh, maybe you can take advantage of being a number two guy. Another DST you could look at. They may be dropped this week. They, well, they've been horrible anyway, but the Bills at the Jets. That's going to be a popular that's one. That's a great beat the waiver wire one. Christian Kirk. You know, we, we kind of like Christian Kirk this week against Dallas, I think. And next week he gets Seattle. He's yeah. been used more as a downfield threat in Arizona's offense. They're, they're trying to get more vertical in their passing game, and he's been a part of that. Oh Well, let me tell you the team that has given up the most 40-yard pass plays in the NFL. That would be Seattle. That would be Kirk's opponent next week. So uh, you could take a look at him. Arizona's schedule, just by the way, if you're looking like for like a buy high maybe, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not calling a Kyler, Kyler Murray a buy low, but you want to get him on your team. He's got Dallas this week. Um, Seattle, then a buy. Seattle, then a bye, then the Dolphins, then the Bills, then the Seahawks. So then like, it gets a, a little bit rougher after that. But yes, but it's you're still going to start them. Yeah, beautiful for Kyler Murray. And let's let's give Seattle a little credit. Their defense, in terms of where they've given up, has been better their last two games, playing Miami and Minnesota, as opposed to what they started with, with those three quarterbacks that they faced. Uh, yes, um, and Jamal Adams hopefully will be back. Uh, so who else? Oh, uh, Marquis. They've actually been, I guess, better without Jamal Adams, right? Sure. Sure. I mean, the, 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 clearly the, the passing attacks have been much different. I don't know why I said Marquis Brown. I was looking at something else. I'm sorry. Christian Kirk, Kansas City DST at Denver. And Derek Carr is probably on your waiver wire. He's got Tampa Bay next week. That's not great. But the schedule after that gets a lot better. And Derek Carr's off to a really good start. All right, time for the start meter for our last three games of today. Those three games would be San Francisco and the Rams, Baltimore at Philly, Atlanta at Minnesota. Or, um, yeah, Atlanta, Minnesota. Okay, Jared Goff, start meter 0 to 10. Six. Six. 
A Rams running back. Five. Six. For who? For Henderson? Yeah, mm -hmm. but he's, I think, on thin ice. The Niners' run defense has been really good. And they're, you know. They're I don't think they've allowed 100 total yards to a running back this year. I don't think they've allowed 60 rushing yards yet. Something like that. So, I mean, if, if you're trying to get away from them, this is a good excuse to do it. Yeah, it's, it's tough, though. Tough this week with injuries and buys. Cups, uh, cup and Woods, Dardo meter? Ten for both. Yeah, you're going to start both. I'd say eight for Woods, seven and a half for Cup. Rams tight end? Four. Yeah, three for both. Jimmy Garoppolo, if he plays? Zero. Two. Mostert? Ten. Ten. McKinnon? Two. Uh, yeah. San Francisco wide receiver. Rams allow the fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. Zero. One and one half. Baltimore running backs. Six uh, for Ingram. Three really? for Daniels. Six for Ingram. That's higher than I would have expected. Five for Ingram in non-PPR. Four for Ingram in PPR. If he scores, you're fine. If he doesn't score, you're bleeped. Yeah. Uh, Marquise Brown. Eight. Eight. Darius Travis. Slay got as in the concussion protocol, right? He is. I don't know if that really matters because I don't know if Slay can keep up with Brown. Well, at least it's a hindrance. You know, speed bump or not. Yeah. Uh, Travis Fulgham. Two. Oh, I think he's at five, especially if we don't get Deshaun. Definitely if we don't get Alshon back, but even if we don't get both those guys back, he's at least a five. Greg Ward. Two. Four. Zach Ertz. Five. Five. Yeah, but Dave, you're kind of low on him. You're like, you're like 14th. Yeah, but you're looking for anything at tight end once you get past the big five. Yeah. Uh, Kirk Cousins. I don't even know if it's a big five. I just kind of threw out that number. No, it's a big five. Let's Johnny. see. We got Kelsey, Kittle, Andrews, Janu. No, Janu, right? And Waller. Janu's got to be in there. Yeah, but well, Waller's, Waller's not up this week. week. Oh, you mean this week. Okay. Sorry. So it's a big four this week. Um, Man, John has been good. Uh, Kirk Cousins. Oh, Six. no. Well, really? Uh, I was going to say like four. Falcons, bro. Vikings, bro. They're going to want to <laughs> run. Yeah. Uh, Justin Jefferson. It's a tough one. Five. Uh, five. So there, start there is a part of me that wonders, like, do they just let Kirk Cousins go bananas because they know this is a good matchup for him? And if that's the case, then I'm going to be dead wrong on Jefferson. But yeah. I don't know. I just I feel like whenever they've got the opportunity to run the ball down the throats of their opponent, they're going to do it. Okay. As evidence late last week against Seattle. Kyle Rudolph or Irv Smith? Uh, I like Irv Smith as a sleeper this week, you know, but it's, it's kind of the same uh, trap I fell into with Ian Thomas. Ian, yeah, last week of – Prior to facing Atlanta, most targets, best performance, yeah. and then was a complete sure. letdown. So, Irv Smith, most targets, they finally started using him a little bit. He's got so much upside if they were to use him because he's such an athletic playmaker, but they just get away from him too much. And so, maybe last week was a sign of something. But, you know, if you are stuck at tight end and, like, for example, if you've been looking at no Darren Wall or couldn't get Jimmy Graham and was hoping for maybe Trey Burton, and now if the Colts game doesn't play, go look for Irv Smith. He's also a great punt play on DraftKings. He's at the lowest possible price among tight ends at 2500 All right. And uh, just the Falcons here, Matt Ryan. Five. With Julio, eight. Without Julio, That's four. That's fair. Yep. Yeah. Russell Gage. May not play, but if he does play, four. four. Hayden Hurst. Four. Yeah. Okay. All right, the game of the week, according to me. Green Bay at Tampa Bay. Uh, here's your stat of the game. Let's look at this Green Bay defense. So the Green Bay is 4-0. They've beaten Minnesota, Detroit, New Orleans, and Atlanta. Uh, they have the second lowest pressure percentage in the NFL. Only Detroit gets less pressure on the quarterback per drop back. Preston Smith so far is half a sack. He's been used in coverage more this year than he had last year. Um, they're also Green Bay also near the bottom of the league in takeaways per game. They are not getting pressure and they are not getting takeaways. So that is interesting because Tom Brady has thrown two pick sixes. He's fumbling a lot. 
Uh, we've seen a little bit of issues with the offensive line. It's not good against the Bears. So this is an interesting matchup. It's also an interesting matchup, guys, because the Packers' run defense is so bad, but the Buccaneers are a, th- are a pass first team. Um, so I guess in general, you know, just overview of this game, Jamie, like how do you see this one unfolding? I hope it's a shootout. I hope we have the full complement of Tampa Bay wide receivers out there with Godwin and Evans. And then we get to see these two Hall of Fame quarterbacks going back and forth like it should be. Um, Rodgers is having an MVP campaign. Brady has been up and down. But, you know, the last time we saw him with Godwin and Evans on the field for the majority of the game was his second best game of the season. The Chargers game was his best game of the season. But the Broncos game was, uh, was a strong performance for him with just shy of uh, 300 yards passing and three touchdowns. So if you have Godwin out there, then Brady is a must-start quarterback. Obviously, Rodgers is going to be great. Um, I don't necessarily look at these defenses as significant uh, problems for these guys because Rodgers, I think, will have his way against any defense at this point, the way he's playing. So even though the, the Bucks secondary is good and their defense as a whole is good, I, I think the loss of Vita Vey is going to be felt in terms of their pressure up the middle and certainly the run defense. So... You know, I think it's going to be a good game for the uh, Packers passing game. Excited to see Devontae Adams out there. Um, I'm really curious to see what Robert Tanya is going to do because uh, week one when Adams was healthy, he had no catches and they didn't use their tight ends at all. And then, you know, it started in the Detroit game, which is when Adams got banged up. And then we've seen Tanya just explode o- over the last, you know, two plus games for, for the Packers. So that's the one I'm really curious about. And then you've, you've said this a lot, Adam, um, about MVS, you know, his week one performance when Adams was there, he was great. And then he's been just an uh, utter disaster as the co number one with Lazard. And then just, you know, the last time we saw them against Atlanta, he was a disappearing act. So those are the, those are the guys I think you want to look at from, from uh, the Packers side of things. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's everyone. <laughs> uh, the other fun stats in this game, Robert Tanyan, you know, his two big games were against teams that are 31st and 32nd against tight ends. <clears throat> He's part of that. Uh, keep that in mind. Green Bay allows the most receiving yards to running backs. Keep that in mind because Ronald Jones had a ton of targets in his last two games. And Mike Evans in two games with Chris Goblin has four yards and three touchdowns. So we could talk about this game for a half hour. I will do my best to speed things up. Aaron, I think it's simple. I think you start anybody in this game who's giving you at least some production at any point this season. Okay, yeah. Aaron Rodgers is number four. Like you may, Aaron Rodgers is interesting because he was drafted as like a low end number one or maybe a number two. Um, so the only quarterbacks that Dave and Jamie and Heath are starting over Aaron Rodgers are Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Kyler Murray. Other than that, Aaron Rodgers is number four across the board. <laughs> we were doing a Twitch stream yesterday and we got a question. Half PPR, Alexander Madison, Mike Davis, Aaron Jones, sit one. And I said, sit Aaron Jones. And Chris, like, his eyes were going to pop out of his head. His is <laughs> bulging out of his neck. He was so mad at me. I was like, dude, if Vita Vea were playing, this would actually be an easy call, you know, because Mike Davis and, uh, and Madison are set up for such success. But that's the only scenario where you'd even consider sitting Aaron Jones. He's a top five running back. And I think, uh, I think you guys actually had in PPR. Yeah. So Jamie goes, Mike Dav- Zeke, Davis, Madison, Jones. And Dave goes, Zeke, Davis, Jones, Madison. So it was a fun, fun debate that we had there. Um, yeah, Devontae Adams, I'll just ask this. Carlton Davis has been really good this year. You look at, like, Allen Robinson had 10 catches for 90 yards. That came on 16 targets. Keenan Allen had, like, eight catches for 62 yards. That was on 12 targets. Michael Thomas had three catches for 17 yards. Are you avoiding Adams in DFS, only in DFS? Sure. No. Because he's going to be a contrarian play. Because I think a lot of people are going to be afraid of him based on his price. Okay. And then but it's going to take a lot of work for him to come through on that price. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. He's, if he does, he's the most expensive receiver on DraftKings this week at 8000 Yeah, that's why if you're going to play him, you got to play him as a contrarian and just hope that he delivers. Yeah, and Carlton Davis is a little banged up too, so that helps. Uh, MVS, any interest in MVS? DFS for sure. He's cheap. And, you know, he's the type of player that wins your tournament. We saw it in week one. He can get, you know, three catches for 100 yards and touchdown or, you know, three catches for 150 and two. You know, I mean, he's just mm-hmm. that type of guy. So um, seasonal, I don't think a lot of people are scrambling at receiver as much. You know, 14-team league may be a little bit different. Uh, right. Our podcast league, for example, uh, Todd Rones and I, we have to start him because we're hurting without Lockett there. And uh, our depth has been really challenged. 
because our commissioner stinks and we can't put players on IR on the injured reserve spot. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm starting him in that league, but he laughs I, about it. Oh, I would, I would love to change it. it. You know, it was, Oh, I'm sure you would. I would. If only the commissioner of the league could I, do such a thing. Look, this is, this is for, for commissioners out there. I have never played with IR spots before this year. I think they're extremely valuable. I will never play without them. If it's up to me. Uh, my rule was IR is only for people on the COVID IR list. And I've realized the folly, the error of my ways. You should be so able to fix put, it. Change I can't, it. I can't. I tried. I put it up to a vote. I felt like we had to get either unanimous or pretty close to unanimous. There were too many nays. And I respect that. I respect people saying, you know, um, it's just, it's just, you can't institute it mid year. So I didn't do it, but okay. I, I could do I think it. That's I, fair. Yeah. I think that's fair the way you did. I thought you decided on your own not to do it mid year, which no, I was like going to destroy you for it. <laughs> Weak. Uh, let me ask MVS or any or these three guys: Claypool, Hardman, Fulgham. I would take MVS over Fulgham. I would take all those guys over MVS, but he's he's exactly what Jamie is using him as, which is a bi week replacement type of receiver who's got huge upside in a game that's expected to be high scoring. Robert Tanyan or Zach Ertz? Tanyan. Ertz and PPR. Tanyan and non PPR. I just hope that people don't get burned by Tanyan because of Adams coming back. Uh, I'm hopeful, but you know, again, this is a, uh, you know, Heath brought this up and it's a very valid point. Everything Tanyan has done has been without Devontae Adams on the field. Yep. He, uh, and everything Zach Ertz has done has been on the field, no matter who else has been there. Uh, how, how is it going to change against Baltimore? Well, you know, Ertz is getting his targets and will Tanyan get his targets? I mean, you know, that's the question. So Tanyan, I can see having one catch for 15 yards and that's the end of his day. You know, Ertz may have the same thing, but he's going to get seven or eight targets to do it. Okay, but Tom it's still Brady. the same result. Let's go to Tom Brady. Uh, Tom Brady's 12th for Jamie. Let me get the up, updated here. Is this I'm out. He's still outside of my top 12 as of now, but there will probably be a change. It, it, you know, if Godwin's ruled out, you're probably going to lower him, I assume. But he's right behind like Stafford and Roethlisberger. Right I there could see him the jumping second. those guys. I could see him getting into the top 10 for me. If Godwin plays and Kevin King doesn't, Dude, he, I think he's a sleeping giant in fantasy. Mm -hmm. They just throw the ball so much. They really do. Right. Do you think they, they – just talking about this week. It's not like Brady's been that bad. People are crapping on him. He's not, he hasn't really not been that bad for fantasy. Well, he's gone I, through spurts on the I field. Didn't, I didn't like him Thursday against the Bears for two reasons. One, Godwin wasn't playing, which is the obvious one. But he's a 43-year-old quarterback that came off throwing as much as he did – in week four and then having to go on a short week on the road in week five, that was a recipe for disaster for anyone that's his age. Mm -hmm. So especially against a good defense. So now he's had 10 days to rest and getting his guys back. So there's a lot to like about him. This is just a great week for quarterbacks. I mean, you got Fitzpatrick playing as well as he is. You have Stafford back against the Jaguars. You have Roethlisberger playing as well as he is. You have, you know, I mean, this is a good week for guys. So, you know, if you have Brady on your roster and you're deciding between him and, and some of these other quarterbacks, it's a tough call. It really is. You know, so um, like I, I, I wouldn't play Dalton over him in, in any scenario, even if Godwin doesn't play. Uh, but I can see why Dave likes him. That's just me. Um, but, you know, like Minshew is, is in that conversation as well. Um, you know, guys that have similar type of, I think, upside, but Brady's floor is probably a little bit safer if he has these guys back in what should be a, a shootout. Yeah, if you're thinking long term, I'll start focusing more on this week's game. Sorry, but if you're thinking long term, like you look at the schedule, he's he's got tough matchups on paper, but I'm not really buying it. Like I don't think the Giants are a tough matchup. I still don't think the Panthers are a tough matchup. Um, Rams and Chiefs maybe, but the playoffs, the fantasy. He already playoffs, struggled against the Panthers though, so keep that in mind. They ran all over them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just like that's one secondary I just don't understand. I'm just not there yet. But anyway, yeah, get to uh, weeks 14 through 16. Weeks 14 through 17 because you might be making 17 your championship if there's a week 18. Minnesota, Atlanta, Detroit, Atlanta. Those are the last four games for Tom Brady. He does have a week 13 bye. Keep that in mind. So, um, you know, week 13 bye. But Minnesota, thing, Atlanta, Detroit, Atlanta. One thing with Minnesota. And it's just, it ties into Tampa Bay. Their defense by the end of the season is going to be how Tampa's defense was by the end of last year. Those young corners are starting to get better and they're going to eventually start to become a better defense as a whole because of Mike Zimmer. And so and Hunter will be back. Tell that, to Hunter DK back. Yep. Huh? <laughs> Tell that to DK Metcalf. He destroyed their corners last year. Oh, it's, 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 I'm telling you, by the time you get to the right. end of the season, it's not going to be a great defense, 
But remember how Tampa went from just an absolute disaster? Remember Daniel Jones lit them up in week three? Yep. Oh, yeah. And then by the end of the season, it was a totally different unit. That's going to be the Minnesota Vikings too. Okay. Uh, all right, guys. So let's finish up here. Nobody's starting Leonard Fournette. Ronald Jones, two straight games with 17 or more carries and 100-plus yards. Two straight games uh, in the passing game. He's had nine catches in those two games. So starter sit Ronald Jones. Number two running back. Start him. Yeah, must start until he shows you something different. Top 20 guy. I like him better than Mixon this week. But you got to be a little concerned that Fournette's healthy and Bruce Arians goes all Arians on us. McCoy, McCoy is, is going to be healthy too. I mean, he's been trending in the right direction. So there are concerns. But I think, again, until they show you something different, stay with him. Okay. And uh, Rob Gronkowski, starter, said he has had six or seven targets in two of his last three games. And then I'll ask you about Cameron Brait. Uh, so far, Packers great against tight ends. Hawkinson at 62 yards, Hurst at 51, but still they've been very good. No touchdowns allowed. Gronk, starter, sit. Hurst should have had the touchdown against them. What would you say, Jim? Uh, Gronk's a desperation play. I mean, I don't want to play Gronk. All right. He's also banged up, too, dealing with a shoulder injury. And nobody's playing Brait, but, you you know, if you're in one of those leagues where there's just no tight ends out there, you know Brait could always catch you. Yeah, I mean, uh, our our Dynasty League team, Adam, uh, we had a big win last week. I forgot who we beat. Um, But our Dynasty League team, Adam – we uh, we're down Darren Waller, and uh, we're starting Trey Burton right now. But if the Colts game doesn't play, we may have to pivot to somebody like Bright. Yay! All right, all right. <laughs> Arizona Dallas Monday night game. Stat of the game. The only reason, well, not the only a reason why you might want to avoid Christian Kirk. Every wide receiver who has scored more than four non PPR fantasy points against Dallas has had eight or more targets. So they do give up a lot of points to wide receivers, but it usually requires a lot of targets. The only exception to that was Jarvis Landry. He threw a touchdown, though. And what did he have, seven targets last week, Kirk? Kirk had seven targets last week, yes. The odd couple, Adam? I, that, it was just the only, like, waiting music I could think of. <laughs> Goodness That's gracious. Good that you I, think, I think Kirk is uh, – a good flex this week. I, I don't have him as a top 24 wide receiver, right. but there's plenty of upside and you got to be encouraged by what he's done the last couple of weeks. Absolutely. All right. Let me ask you this. You got some flex spots. How many Dallas wide receivers would you start over Kenyon Drake? What's the format? Half a point per reception. I Ooh, would start, I'd start them all. Not Gallup. I would start the other two over him. Drake's making me nervous, man. Cedric Wilson would be one of the two. So you'd start Ronald Jones over Kenyon Drake? Yes. Yes. Would you start Miko Hardman over Kenyon Drake? I toyed with – yes, I would do that. I toyed with the idea of starting Chase Edmonds over Kenyon Drake. I have Drake and Edmonds in a 20-some-odd league team. I forget what our office league is. Uh, I think it's 20. I'm not starting Edmonds over Drake. I'm still starting Drake. Because the Cowboys give a lot of rushing yards. And so I can see him scoring. Cowboys also allow the second fewest receiving yards to running backs so far per game. Um, you know, it could be just a product of who they've played, but they've been good there. And they're not and getting they, their greatest linebacker in the history of football back yet. He's not playing this week? I don't think so. Oh, sorry. Burning a hole in your roster. Huh? No, no, we have our spots. So that's a good commission. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, JB offered to give Leighton Van Der Esch to me if, he, <laughs> if the Hurricanes beat Clemson last week. So uh, I don't know how the league would have felt about that if it actually had come to fruition. I would have traded him to you for something. Yeah. Your worst player, right? Like Matt Ryan. He's basically been my worst player three weeks in a row. Seems fair. Uh, all right. So Drake will, will try to avoid basically is what you're telling me. Well, the, I don't know how that came up though, by the way, because you, you texted me something LVE and I was like, what, what? You love me? Uh, I don't remember. Yes, I wrote, you were like, huh? And I was like, Leighton Van Der Esch. So that's where we are talking code now. Um, would you start Christian Kirk or, or Kenyon Drake? Starting Drake. The, the, he's still getting enough work that you have to feel somewhat encouraged. I got Kirk higher in PPR. Oh, Dave's getting away from Kenyon Drake. Uh, start Hopkins. Andy Dalton, 15th for Jamie, 16th for Heath, and 10th for Dave. The Cardinals, you look at the Cardinals' defense on paper, they're good, but they've had two games, one against the Jets, one against the uh, football team that's really boosted their defensive stats. And as Dave mentioned, no more Chandler Jones. They're three, they're three competent quarterbacks that they face, Jimmy Garoppolo, 
Teddy Bridgewater and Stafford. Stafford. 22 or more fantasy points for all three of those guys. Every so think, single one of them had 250 yards and two scores. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what Dalton will do. You know, you look at Dalton and you go back. I was looking at this last night. His 2018 season, which is the closest wide receiver core that he's had to this, when he had Tyler Boyd and A.J. Green healthy for the first eight games, he averaged 21.2 fantasy points per game. So it's a different system. Obviously, he's got better talent around him because there's a third receiver, there's a tight end, and there's a running back that's clearly a stud. The one concern you have to have with um, – with Dalton and with Cowboys this week, is it just going to be the Zeke show? And so, you know, try and get a W, run on a team that you want to keep their offense off the field. And so is Dalton going to get you to 250 and two? Now Vegas thinks that they're going to have a high scoring game. So that's encouraging. So I think Dalton's a very good replacement option for Dak, but I wouldn't get crazy with starting him over some of these better quarterbacks that are in just as good matchups. Yeah, the reason why you said he was on pace for like 21, 22 points per game, what, 2018? With the first eight games, he yeah. averaged 21.2 points per game. And you know why it was only that? It's because of interceptions. Because he was on pace for 4,300 yards and 33 touchdowns in those games. But, um, oh, no, 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 sorry. He was on pace for uh, 4,200 yards and 34 touchdowns, but 16 picks. He's a and little last, turnover prone. That's his issue. Last year, without A.J. Green, uh, before he got benched, he had eight starts. And he had five games of 20 or more fantasy points in those eight. But it wasn't a lot of big games. So turnovers are going to be an issue for him. I'm still worried about the tackles because Dak's going to yeah. overcome those offensive line woes. And obviously not having Chandler Jones there is going to be a big, big boost for the Cowboys. But still, if he's under duress, we saw it in the Giants game. You know what? His first drive or second drive, he fumbled. fumbled. You know, so he's going to turn the ball over. That's just what Danny Dalton does. So how confident, confident are you in the Cowboys wide receivers and and? For the record, Dalton really spread the ball around. He threw 11 passes, three to Cooper, three to Lamb, three to Gallup, and two to Pollard. Uh, so how confident are you in the Cowboys wide receivers? And compare them to, let's say, Ronald Jones, who is a flex option for a lot of people based on where you drafted him, number two running back for you guys this week. I've got Cooper and Lamb as number two receivers in PPR and Gallup as a flex. Where they compare to Ronald Jones, uh, Cooper's going to be ahead of him. Lamb's going to be ahead of him. I've got Jones ahead of Gallup. I would start Jones over all of them. Um, but wow. the, the one guy that you get away from is Gallup. I, I know he had the two big catches. He had a 19-yard reception and a 38-yard reception in the fourth quarter. But this is still uh, a, a player that just doesn't get the targets that you like right now. Yep. And so you're going from a downgraded quarterback to trusting a guy all of a sudden. Uh, I don't think you should do that yet. He's I'm got, hopeful. I'm hopeful, but I wouldn't start him. He's got – Five targets or fewer, I believe, in four of five games. Yep. He's had seven non-PPR or fewer points in four or five, 11 or fewer PPR points in four or five, and single digits in PPR in three of five. Yeah. yeah. So unless Andy Dalton really yeah. loves Michael Gallup, I just I don't see it going down. How about Dalton Schultz, starter sit? He's a starter by default. You know, yeah, so that's I wouldn't a good way want to, to start him if you can get away from it. Uh, like I just give you an example. I, I have Hunter Henry in a 10 team league and I had picked up Dalton Schultz two weeks ago and then drop, I dropped Evan Ingram for him. And then I just, I just switched it back this week. So I went from Schultz to Ingram and I could regret that. I would like to see Dalton Schultz continue to be heavily involved, but you know, after what you saw last week, it wasn't very encouraging. So I wonder if we're just going to use the extra tight end as a blocker more now to help give Dalton some extra protection. Yeah, maybe Schultz or Schultz or Ertz. I still have Schultz higher, but I'm kind of on a let's bury Zach Ertz kick right now. Okay. And you uh, liked Ertz prior to the season before. Over, I know. Uh, I know. What's the name? Um, Andrews. I did in PPR. Yeah. But that was also before Philadelphia lost everybody at receiver right, yeah. and offensive line. If I had known that, it would have changed quite a bit. And right, I kind of hinted at it, didn't I? Yeah. Didn't I say that they were going to be a team that would keep getting injuries? I don't know how I figured that one out, but. Oh, you did sort of say that, yeah. Yeah. Team. yeah okay, now I'm going to finish this game. Arizona is – DST is 8th for Jamie, 11th for Dave, and 8th for Heath. You can look at them as a streamer. Um, although if the Cowboys get very run heavy, that's They not shouldn't even be that high. I'm going to move them down. All right. Washington is at the Giants. The football team could be without its starting center in this game. Keep that in mind. But they could be getting Brandon Scherf back. That's would be He's – nice. He might be their best offensive player. Well, I guess that's not fair to McLaurin. He might be their second best offensive player, their right guard, Brandon Scherf. All right, stat of the game. 
The football team gives up big plays. They have allowed six pass plays of 40-plus yards. That's tied for the most in the NFL with Seattle. Um, these two teams are terrible in that regard. They both have just one pass play of 40-plus yards offensively. So you've got a weakness for the Giants against uh, a weakness for the football team. And just in general, I mean, you look at these two teams, they've done a pretty good job against wide receivers. Like the Giants, you're talking about bad, bad game for Allen Robinson, bad game for Amari Cooper. And I might be forgetting one more. I mean, the Rams. Well, Ro- Robinson had a bad quarterback in that game. Uh, yeah, the well, started, that's not going to, it's not going to change for Washington. They're going to have a bad quarterback too. Uh, but uh, anyway, they, they did a good job against the Rams wide receivers. So McLaurin and Slayton are obviously on different levels, but I don't think they're that far apart in the rankings this week. You like both of them as starts, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, you know, hopefully the uh, return of Kyle Allen, the great Kyle Allen will help Terry McLaurin. <laughs> um, I mean, look, that, that's such a, a, a poor game to judge the Washington football team's offense against because they couldn't block Aaron Donald. They couldn't, they just, every time, whatever quarterback it was, took a step, there was a guy in his face. So that's not going to be the case with the Giants. So hopefully McLaurin has some time. Uh, Allen has some time to hit McLaurin. And, you know, that's the only receiver you can look at. You know, Logan Thomas has been a disaster the last two weeks if you've been trusting him in deeper leagues. And McKissick is their second best receiver right now. So if you're stuck at, at running back, and obviously this goes for anybody in the Colts Bengals game, go look at JD McKissick because PPR, he could be a borderline starter for you. Mm hmm. McKissick has 16 catches in his last three games, been around 40 yards each game. 16 targets in his last two. 28% rostered for McKissick. Um, so having said that, McLaurin's going to be in everyone's lineup. He's a must start. But Slayton, uh, like who are some guys you'd start Slayton over? I would start him over Hollywood Brown. I would start him over DJ Moore. Claypool was the big pickup of the week. Uh-uh. I'd go with Slayton ahead of him. I know that Brandon Cooks, people are like, ooh, could he be back now? I would go with Slayton over him. I think I, I look at Slayton as boomer bust. I look at him as the best boomer bust receiver you could start this week. He might be better than the Cowboys guys, too. He's better than Gallup. Why so, confident? Over Gallup. Why so huh? confident in him? He's had three bad games. Do you want to know games. what did it for me? The, yeah. the matchup is great. Is it, though? Like, it isn't on paper. Like DeAndre, I know Hopkins statistically it isn't. Eight yards, Marquis, he did catch a touchdown. Uh, yeah. The Cleveland wide receivers were bad. Cooper Cup had five catches for sixty-six yards. I think the difference is, that, you know, those, those teams, teams were running on them. Better running it, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I like like Dave said it best, you know, earlier that Devontae Freeman has a great opportunity this week. But I mean, look, this, this is you got to get Daniel Jones going at some point, you know. So he's gone four straight games with a touchdown. You got to give him a confidence boost. This is a confidence boost. Last time he faced this team was week 16 last year. He went for 45 fantasy points against them. You know, so get him going. And Darius Slayton's the best way to get him going. Yeah. I, I noticed that uh, I, I watched this game back, and Slayton, I think he's got a chance to be a really good receiver in the NFL. He plays with physicality. He's fast. He's big. Um, I, I think he could be great. And the reason why he's not great every week is because Daniel Jones isn't great every week. We've they got don't have time. Yeah, they don't have time. The yeah, the offensive line's, line's a huge problem. Right, that, and that's a problem in this game. Is it, though? Because I went to go back and see how the pass rush pressure has been for Washington. And since week two, they're 29th in the league overall in the season. They're 19th. Chase Young was back last week. He had one sack. So I'm not sure if they're going to be a, a, an absolutely debilitating pass rush unit on Daniel Jones. I think he can have time. And listen to this. He's got a much better completion rate against zone coverage, 65%, 7.1 yards per attempt, than man coverage, which is 58 completion rate, 4.9 yards per attempt. Washington predominantly plays zone. It's a staple of what Ron Rivera wants from his defense. I don't think they're going to change it up. I think Daniel Jones I'm, – I'm, I'm not confident enough to trust Daniel Jones outside of my second quarterback in a super flex or a 2QB. I don't want to use him in DFS unless it's in a big-time tournament. I just want to you know, fire a shot. But I do think this helps Darius Slayton. And I don't buy into Washington's defense being great at all. Okay. So let's uh, fire through the rest of this game here. We'll talk about the running backs. First of all, are there any other wide receivers we'd start? No. I mean, Golden Golden Tate in deep PPR league, sure. Bye week guy in PPR. Um, Antonio Gibson or Ronald Jones? Ronald Jones. Uh, Gibson. Okay. I think they're ranked fairly similarly. Yeah, they are. They're number two running backs. You know, Rojo, if, if they don't 
mess them up has a much higher ceiling. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, well, maybe. A non-PPR, sure. PPR, yeah. I don't know about that because we've seen Gibson continue to trend in the right direction in the passing game. Yeah, they're both doing a great job. But, I mean, Rojo's got two straight 100-yard games. Gibson has nine catches in his last two games, 12 in his last three. Love it. Devontae Freeman or He'll Darius? he get to 70 yet. Devontae Freeman or Darius Slayton? I'd uh, rather take the chance with Slayton. Slayton has much more upside. Freeman's got a better floor because he's been, you know, two straight games of at least 15 touches. It doesn't look good, though, on paper because he's averaging 3.1 yards per carry. But I, I think a lot of that has to do with the offensive line. I think he's got some. Well, I mean, last week's a better indication of what legs. he could do this week because last week was his third game in, second game where he was featured, and he's facing a similar defensive type of opponent of a team that's just not very good. 10% target share over the last two weeks, over 50% of the snaps each of the last two games. He's got 15 touch potential. It's hard to overlook running backs with that. Yeah, I, but they, they, I don't know. I, I feel like the football team has a good defensive line. We've known that since day one. They're, they've been pretty solid against the run. You know, I mean, this is not a good matchup, I don't think, for Devontae Freeman. It's oh, it's not, a, it's not a great matchup by any stretch, but it's simply a running back that's got volume yeah. and has looked okay. You know, oh. Okay. No, I, I have a hard time starting Mark Ingram over him as an example. Yeah, he's better than Mark Ingram yeah, for sure. Right, right. Okay. I would start uh, him over – forget about the DUI. I would start him over Melvin Gordon. Okay. Evan Ingram is top 10. <laughs> Look, he's got a great matchup. They give up the fourth most points to tight ends. But you know what? Dallas went, went into last week giving up the seventh most points to tight ends. And Ingram had one catch for 16 yards on two targets. Yes, hey, he, he scored. A, he did score a rushing touchdown. He had a touchdown catch call back, but that was on a fake field goal. But, un, I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's another beautiful matchup for Ingram. And he was so bad last week. Do you, you trust them again? This could be a squeaky wheel game. He was kind of complaining about the routes that they were asked, that they've been asking him to run. Apparently he's running just a bunch of curl routes and short routes, and they're not trying to use them deeper. <laughs> That's a squeaky wheel, Dave. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, Evan Ingram. Way to bring the show to a halt with a, with a sound effect. Sorry. Let's hear it again. Let's hear it again. Would you start Evan Ingram or Robert? That's Tom? a squeaky wheel. It's supposed to be crickets, but it doesn't sound like crickets. So people said, make it the squeaky wheel sound. So I said, okay, fine. Uh, good news. Good news. Odell Beckham, negative for COVID-19. Okay. Hopefully he practices today and he's up for the game against the Steelers. Uh, fellas, um, are we Evan still talking Ingram, about Tanyan? I've got Tanya in a spot higher. Uh, I will take Ingram and PPR for sure. Non-PPR is close. Evan Ingram or Jimmy Graham? Evan Ingram is fantasy Teflon. Think about how bad he's been. We're still talking about him as a top 10 tight well, end. Well, because every week he gets a good matchup. That's the problem. Uh, it's nutty. Uh, I'm uh, starting Ingram. Ingram or Jimmy Graham? Ingram. Ingram. Okay. All right, here we go. Speaking of Jimmy Graham, Chicago, Carolina. This game is just set up beautifully for David Montgomery. A oh running back has scored yes. 24 or more PPR fantasy points in four or five games against Carolina. Kawan Short out for the season. Um, okay, but the Bears, believe it or not, they're, they're fourth in the NFL in pass attempts. They do not run the ball. They're fourth fewest rush attempts per game. Run the ball. Run the ball. Start they've, Montgomery. Start Mike Davis. They've given Montgomery over 80% of the snaps in the two games since Tariq Cohen went down with the torn ACL. And he's had 10 carries in each. And he's stunk with them. And I, I think it's a byproduct of the offense. It's almost like what we talked about with Freeman, although Montgomery's a better running back than Freeman. They also played the two best run defenses in the NFL on paper with the Colts and the Bucks. I mean, mm -hmm. let's let's this is the who they face. That. Right, so now he's getting the Panthers. There's no Kawan short. He's a top I don't know what the status is. I, I think he's close to it. There's, I don't know if good, – what's his name? Gross Matos? Mm -hmm. He's going to play if Brian Burns is going to play. Man, I, everything is set up perfectly for him. It's just a matter of Matt Nagy saying, okay, let's run the ball. He has no other choice to use him in as much I would capacity so. as he can use him. So it's probably going to be a 15-carry game for him, and then you're still going to factor in three to five catches. Mm -hmm. It's a big week coming for David Montgomery. All right, we're going to knock this game out. Here we go. Nobody's starting Nick Foles. Everybody's starting Allen Robinson. Everybody's starting um, Robbie Anderson. We'll get to that in a second. Would you start, real quick, would you start David Montgomery over Miles Sanders facing the Ravens? Yes. I'm not going to do that. Okay. Uh, no other 
Bears wide receiver other than Robinson, who's top 10 in both formats. Jimmy Graham is a low-end starter. Uh, Carolina's been very good against tight ends. They've faced Waller and Henry. Both of those guys had 45 to 50 yards, no touchdowns. Hayden Hurst had two catches for eight yards. So you need a touchdown, but you are getting a ton but, of red zone targets. Right. Graham. So, And that's going to be the story with Graham no matter who he plays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, starter sit. I would sit him. I would sit him too. You can help it. Mike Davis is an obvious start. Top five in non-PPR and number two in PPR. And in his last three games, he is the number four running back in non-PPR, number two in PPR. Only Alvin Kamara has outscored him. It's been ridiculous. Uh, The Carolina wide receivers. All right, so this is not an easy matchup. This team has been great. Second fewest fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. One touchdown to a wide receiver. Um, But they haven't, like, none of the – have they faced any good wide receivers who have done poorly? No, I wouldn't say. Like, Kenny Galladay didn't play. Julio Jones didn't play. Calvin Ridley had 110 yards. Mike Evans, 41 yards and a touchdown. So the touchdown was a goal line one, basically. Yeah, and they've got a rookie cornerback. That, that yeah, but he's been playing play. good. He's been playing well. The, the difference is how Carolina uses their receivers. And I think the Bears are going to be willing to let them – you know, not necessarily they're going to just let them make short completions, but they're going to try. They would prefer that than giving up the deep ball, and then the Panthers don't try a lot of deep passes. So so it's that volume that you're counting on for Anderson and Moore. Yeah, you're not getting away from Anderson, but are you going to get the volume from D.J. Moore? Is D.J. Moore a start or a sit, and would you start C.D. Lamb over him? I'd start Lamb over him. He's more of a sit yep. than a start. He's obviously yep. better in PPR than non-PPR. He's got seven touchdowns in three seasons, and the last one he had was um, – the, the, the touchdown last week was great, but, you know, you just can't count on it. The Bears have allowed one touchdown to a wide receiver. So Anderson is, is better in PPR than non-PPR, but this is, a, this is a game to try and get away from DJ Moore. Okay. I'd rather have Slayton, even in yep. PPR. Yep. Get away from Ian Thomas. And uh, the Bears DST is top 12. Not an amazing start, but start them. Rams at 49ers. Stat of the game. San Francisco allows the second fewest fantasy points to running backs. 3.03 yards per carry to running backs. No lead running back. Kenyon Drake, Frank Gore, Devontae Freeman, Miles Sanders, Miles Gaskin. None of them average four yards per carry yet. So, uh, again, the run defense has been good. Pass defense completely fell apart last week. It's, it, so, the, you know, it's, it's ugly with those Rams running backs. But – uh, like, what do you make of the 49ers right now? You know, they had been sort of surviving with all these injuries and it all came crashing down last week. Do you think the Rams can have their way with the 49ers? Could they? Yeah. Will they? I expect a big bounce back game from the Niners, certainly defensively after what happened last week. They're certainly familiar with what the Rams are doing. They play each other all the time. The Rams seem to be trying to emulate what the 49ers are doing offensively. I I think the 49ers give them a game. I think it's going to make it a little tough on Goff. And uh, I don't have him in my top 12, for example. And I like Robert Woods the best. Cup doesn't have a great track record against San Fran. Uh, Yeah, I'm I'm kind of – I'm a little nervous about those Rams. And certainly with the run game, maybe the run game cumulatively will be fine. But I, I can't say that one's going to be much better than the other. Uh, I would expect Akers to get more work than last week. I would expect Brown to continue to play on third downs and obvious passing situations. And then I, I just can't say that it's going to lead to more than maybe 11 or 12 touches for any of those running backs. Would you start in a PPR league J.D. McKissick over Daryl Henderson? Yes. No. I, I just I don't see a lot of upside for McKissick outside of the catches. Like, he's a floor play of 9 or 10 PPR points, and Henderson's got a higher ceiling than that for sure. The fact that uh, Sean McVay said they're going to give Cam Akers more work, you got to worry if uh, that comes at Henderson's expense, who only had 15 carries for 38 yards last week. You know, so he yeah. did not run well. In terms, of, in terms of per carry, it's two bad games in a row for him. So yep. you definitely got to be on alert there for Henderson. Yep. Um, I understand you're going to start Cup and Woods, okay, and the tight end's not really. Kittle is a start. Garoppolo is not. Mostert is a start. How about Ayuk or Debo? No, I wouldn't use them unless you're desperate for a bye week replacement. All right, then let's do this. Andy Dalton or Jared Goff? Dalton. Goff. Stafford or Goff? Stafford. Stafford. Goff or Cousins? 
Golf. Golf. All right. Golf's fine. Golf, I just want to give these stats real quick on golf rest of the season. He has been so damn lucky. Uh, he's, he has a career high nine yards per attempt. He is, well, you know, to be fair, like he's just not throwing the ball downfield. They're getting a lot of yards after catch. They are the 49ers. Hello. Mm -hmm. Seven yards per catch. Um, seven yards after catch per completion. That's way up. It was 5.8 in 2018. It was 5.7 in 2019. It's seven yards after catch per completion. So maybe that's luck. Maybe that's scheme. Yeah, that's I just not think, 49ers football. That's West Coast offense football. But it's, be, but it's like hyper efficient. That's what he's got two rushing touchdowns this year. Um, if he does not throw the ball, if he does not start throwing the ball more, I, you know, he's just not going to produce, I don't think, as much. And, uh, and by the way, they have one game rest of season against a top 10 offense, a current top 10 offense, which is interesting. Um, okay. Well, they haven't played uh, Seattle yet, though, right? So they have two. Right, they have two games. They have one opponent. They have two games. Both of them are Seattle. Now, I think Arizona has certainly a chance to be a top 10 offense or a couple other teams on the schedule that could be. But based on right now, only one game, only two games against one opponent, same opponent. Baltimore at Philadelphia. Uh, stat of the game. You know, this could be big for Miles Sanders because it's not going to be an easy matchup on the ground. Baltimore allows the eighth most receiving yards per game to running backs, which is weird. They were so good at that last year. Screen, screen, screen. I hope so. Or get them involved. With some wheel routes field. mixed in. Chris Towers has mentioned that, that Wentz keeps missing Sanders open downfield. So maybe he can, he can get some. He could have just stopped that Wentz keeps missing. <laughs> but you, like, he had 10 carries for six yards and a touchdown against the Steelers other than that long run, which he had. Can't take it away from him. But you're not, you're not hesitating, hesitating to start Miles Sanders. You have to build that into his upside. And you know that he's going to have a good workload, and you have to trust that the Eagles are going to find ways to get him the football. Their, their offense can't be throw to Fulgham, throw to Fulgham, throw to Fulgham. They've, they've got to use other players, and certainly players that are faster than Fulgham. Lamar Jackson is sixth for Dave and Jamie and fifth for Heath. Must start guy, but you could go with Deshaun Watson. You can go with Aaron Rodgers over him, Kyler. If he had started last year like he started this year, would he still be on fantasy rosters by now? Because remember, rosters? he was a late round pick. He yeah, was a late round pick last year. He's he not. Be I don't believe he's he a top twelve be quarterback. I think he's like a round twelve. He he's thirty. He had thirty three points in one game. He had twenty eight points in one game. Yeah. He's going to explode. Like it's it's bound to happen that he's going to have a massive game. And I wonder if he's going to be a second half quarterback, where they're just the, the, the Ravens kind of are confident enough to know. Okay. We're going to work out kinks, and by the time it matters and we get close to the playoffs, Lamar will be running on all cylinders. Yeah, and he's got this knee. He had this knee issue last week that apparently contributed to his complete lack of rushing. So hopefully he's a little healthier now. Uh, Mark Ingram or Daryl Henderson? Henderson. I think there's more upside with Henderson. Marquise Brown or um, Devontae Freeman? Uh, Freeman and non PPR Brown and PPR. I'll take Brown and both. Okay. Yeah. They, Philadelphia has not been bad. McLaurin woods, Juju odd 61 or fewer yards. Claypool obviously had a huge game. Some, some good, some bad. Not See, this is where target share kind of lies to, to fantasy managers. He's, he's had anywhere between 21 to 38% of the Ravens target share from game to game. The lowest is 21%. That's great. They're just not throwing a lot. And this could be one of those games where this, they end up not throwing a ton. Uh, more COVID news. Uh, Falcons tests have cleared and players or staff are returning to their facility. Hey, all hey, right. all right. Um, the thing with the Ravens that is a concern, and it, it's across the board, it's when they're holding a lead in the fourth quarter, they're going to start to pull guys. You've seen it with Mark Ingram. You've seen it now with Lamar Jackson a couple of times. They just, you know, th their defense is so dominant and they're probably going to destroy this Eagles offense. So that's the concern is, is how much are these guys going to be putting up, padding their stats in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. It's very clear that Lamar Jackson got his MVP and is not worried about stats. They're just worried about wins and getting to the postseason. Yeah, but this is nothing new. I mean, this is exactly what happened last year. They, right, last the last difference year, last, is that Lamar Jackson offense, was putting up numbers. Ridiculous. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Look, Marquise Brown is on pace for over 1,000 yards. He just has one touchdown this year. He has a, at least two almost touchdowns. Mm -hmm. they, they, they were trying to get him in the end zone, and then they finally did last week. And I don't know if they're going to be as 
Like he's a know, number two hard. receiver. Yes. That's that's gonna win you some weeks. And I mean he could have a three touchdown game. It wouldn't surprise right. me. Right. Right. He's always capable. Right. Uh Carson Wentz sit, Miles Sanders start, but you know, Mike Davis, Alexander Madison, Kareem Hunt are all gonna be ranked ahead of him. Um, we're pretty much avoiding the Philadelphia wide receivers, but Jamie said, uh, or Dave said, Fulgham. One of you said Fulgham is your favorite this week, and one of you said, oh, Jamie said the Baltimore cornerbacks are his favorite this week. Yeah. And then Fulgham Thacker, by default. Yeah, don't chase Fulgham's numbers, though. If you don't have to you play, can't. Don't play him. You can't. The only thing to say about Fulgham is he's totally volume-based. I, I don't know how many targets he's going to get again, and this is a tougher matchup for him. Baltimore's only struggled with fast receivers, downfield guys this year. They should not have a problem covering Fulgham. All right, Zach Ertz is uh, ninth for Jamie, 13th for Dave, eighth for Heath. So uh, you all have Evan Ingram ranked ahead of Ertz. Oh, yeah. Hawkinson. Um, Dave, I got to see it from Ertz. I got to see it. it. I got to see I it. I it, man. Uh, Dave also has Graham and even Darren Fells, if Jordan Akins is out, I assume. Yeah, I'm I'm throwing dirt on Zach Ertz at this point. It's not very respectful of me. And Baltimore's DST is a start. Must start. Final game is Atlanta at Minnesota, and it looks like this game is going to be played. So, the stat of the game, other than one game against Green Bay, the other four games that Atlanta has played, they've given up 92 yards or a touchdown to multiple wide receivers against Seattle, Dallas, Chicago, and Carolina. They face some very good wide receivers, but they've been awful. It's against two wide receivers basically in every game but one. So that's obviously a Justin Jefferson stat. And would you rather start Justin Jefferson or Michael Gallup this week? Jefferson. I'll go Gallup. Would you rather start Justin Jefferson or Daryl Henderson this week? Jefferson, if you can. It's so close. I, I, I think I'll probably go Henderson. Matt Ryan is a start if Julio plays, and he's a sit if Julio does not play. He's 17th for Jamie. He's 20th for Dave. 14th for Heath. And Todd Gurley, you're not sitting him at this Gotta point. Got to go with him. Yeah. Um, all right. Calvin Ridley, fire him up. Adam Thielen, fire him up. Tell me how you feel about Kirk Cousins. And we'll get to – well, Hayden, Hayden Hurst or Zach Ertz? Hurst. Uh, Ertz. Okay. I think Dave has them maybe back-to-back. So they're not top. Hayden Hurst is not top 12 for David Jamie. He is top eight for Heath, though. Um, Minnesota, hard to know. They don't seem to be very good against tight ends, but they haven't faced a lot of good ones. All right, how do you feel about Kirk Cousins, Jamie? I think he's a good streamer. Um, it's not going to be pretty because of the pass attempts, but he could have a like 203 type of game. Wouldn't surprise me, you know, where he's just in that 27 27- 24 to 27 pass attempts. He hits one to Thielen. He hits one to Jefferson. He hits one to one of the tight ends or maybe Madison out of the backfield. But he's not going to be a, a 35, 40 pass attempt type of guy unless the Falcons offense is fantastic. So um, it's not a, a very confident play in Kirk Cousins. But if you couldn't get Andy Dalton off of waivers as the Dak Prescott manager and you couldn't find a good replacement option for Russell Wilson or Drew Brees or any other quarterbacks on a bye, he's not a bad pivot play just because of the matchup. Do you see a correlation? He does have multiple between, touchdowns, too, of his last three, so that's something you can hang your hat on. Do you see a correlation between your confidence in Kirk Cousins and Julio Jones' availability? It's probably fair. I mean, Matt right. Ryan's gone, you know, three uh, – excuse me, 11 quarters, uh, the better part of three games, without throwing a touchdown. So their offense has not been good. And so Todd Gurley can only do so much, which is hard to say that in 2020. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I don't really think that, to be honest, though, Julio playing or not playing is going to sway what Kirk Cousins does because we saw it in the beginning part of the season. When they were down, they still ran. When they're up, they're, they're going to run. You know, so this is more of are they going to try and just get Kirk Cousins going a little bit? And, and maybe that's the case. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is my point was Falcons scored a lot of points with Julio healthy. They've been bad without him. You want, yeah. you want them to score points if, you, if you're starting Cousins this week. Uh, and then, yeah, Thielen. We talked about Jefferson, and nobody's trusting Irv Smith, but he or Rudolph could find the end zone. The Falcons have allowed seven touchdowns to tight ends. Well, that is it, folks. All right, you guys ready? Ready for week six? Yes. Woo. Yeah, it's a bunch of high-scoring games. That Colts game is fine. Right now, yeah. everything else trending in the right direction. So. 
Yeah, hope right. So. so keep an eye on that news. And if you're a nervous Nelly like me, go ahead and make sure that you've got a replacement option. Good to go for Taylor, Mixon. Um, who else is huge in that game? I'm blanking on it right now. Those would be the two. Tyler I mean, obviously, Boyd. T.Y. Hilton is. Uh, Tyler Boyd. Yeah, I don't know if Boyd. Hilton is yeah. a big one, but Boyd is. Rivers. And I like T. Higgins this week. I think he'd be good if he played. Yeah. Colts DST. Burton. Another day. Oh, my God. You yeah. got to find a Blanken replacement for Blanken shit. Oh, no. I hope that Blanken game gets played. Let's, uh, let's if wrap not, it up. I'll be Blanken mad. We'll talk to you on the Mailbag Show. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Want more of the Fantasy Football Today podcast and nonstop year-round fantasy advice? It's simple. Hit the subscribe button and hang with us all throughout the year.